All right, YouTubes, we're back for a better draft. That's just all there's to it. We're in silver. That's obviously not where we're going to stay. This is going to be one of those drafts that helps us move up because, man, that last one, clearly I got to step my game up. I just, point one, we got to play better. Point two, draft better. Point three, draw better. Point four, draw better. <laughs> okay, what do we got? Pack one. Fabled Passage, not terrible. You know, helps us splash. Uh, Height Fire Emulator, big fan of this card. Fierce Empath, like that card as well. Twin Blade, okay. Good card, but it's gold. Usually don't want to start with that. Feeder Resistance, Capture Sphere, Pride Malkin, Track Down. I mean, there's a lot of good playables in this, but for me, if I'm just jumping in, this Fierce Empath is, is up there, but I don't like taking this pack one, pick one. Heartfire Emulator, I feel like is just a really good card. And as much as I'd like to take the Fabled Passage just to have it, I think Heartfire Emulator's our best snag here. It's a great two drop. It's really good in what is arguably, debatably, the best archetype, which is blue red spells matter. You can do some really fun things with this card. So hopefully we can do that, but we're not looking to force anything. I could have taken the land. That's a safe pick, but we're not here to play safe. We're here to smash, which is a great motto to have when drafting. <laughs> All right, Azusa, not playing you pretty much ever. Vryn, Wingmare, unless I guess if we get Rada, I would I would try and make it work. Havoc Jester is great, so we're gonna just reserve it, just in case I get too rambly. Watcher of the Spheres, I do really like the Blue White Flyers deck in this format a lot more than I've liked it in other sets. Celestial Enforcer, meh. Capture Sphere, good. Roaming Ghost Light, good. Pitchburn Devils, also good. Pride Malkin, again, another one of these guys. I like the Havoc Jester because even if we don't have a ton of sacrifice synergies and such, the fact that it's just a 5-5 five, five in this set is a big deal. And if we have stuff like Heartfire, Heartfire Immolator, it just helps us do a bit more damage. So yeah, I'm just going to take the uncommon red card because I think it's just our best option here. Even though Watcher of the Spheres, we don't want a tunnel vision on the red, but taking a gold card early too doesn't do us much. doesn't do us many favors, so we'll just take the solid 5-5. Five, five. Okay, we're seeing a lot of blue, but Spellgorger Weird is like my favorite red common. I'm not saying it's the best, I'm just saying it's one of my favorite. I like War of the Spark, it reminds me of that, helps me think that maybe we'll win more than two games. Tideskimmer's good. Jeskai Elder, though, is really good as well. And the fact that it's a two drop also cares about spells matter. But Spellgorger Weird just keeps getting bigger. And the fact that it goes along with these two other cards, this was pack one, pick one. Maybe I take the Elder. Maybe I even take Mistral Singer. But I'm just going to take the Weird because I like it. And it helps us cut red. There was no other red in that pack. So that's convenient. A second Havoc Jester. Interesting. And I don't think I want a second one though. And maybe it's a time to dabble into a second color. I actually have been liking the green red deck more and more, but Reign of Revelation is really solid for us because it just draws us cards. It already helps with a couple other things we got. We've seen two Pride Malkins already. If you end up with like three of these things, that's so nice. And it, this actually pairs really well with Spellgorger Weird too. So you know what, actually, I think I'm gonna take the creature here. Even though I kinda wanna be in the blue-red deck, but I feel like Pride Malkin's just really overperformed for me. And who knows, maybe green will just be a bit more open than blue. All right, Capture Sphere's there. Angelic Ascension is a fantastic answer for Ugin, but we're not gonna run into him, so we don't have to worry about that. There's nothing, nothing to worry about here. Shander's Magmut or Igneous Kerr. I think I like the Kerr just a bit more because you can pump it, even though this does help start pinging stuff if you need. We're not really too worried about that right now. I think I'll just take the other two drop and call it. No, I guess the best card would be Angelic Ascension, Ascension or Secure the Scene. I'm probably not too worried about getting these kinds of cards. And who knows, maybe we end up splashing. I need more removal. Secure the Scene could be a better splash card. So I'm happier taking that right now than a mediocre two drop. All right, another Fierce Empath, which works really well if we end up in that red green deck. Hobble Fiend helps do some sacrifice things, which Havoc Jester would appreciate, but I'm, I'm just going to take the Uncommon. Hopefully, I don't regret it. All right, see, we're seeing a bit more blue. Opt. Everyone likes Opt. How can you not? Destructive Tampering. This card is just... I, I've been hit by it hard, and I don't get it because I would just never play it, but we'll play the Vine because that works. 
Uh, there's nothing here very exciting, but I'm actually going to take the frantic inventory because if you end up with a few of these and a few spell or weirds, that feels really good. Okay, I'm not going to pick one though over a playable here, so we'll take the igneous cur this time. <laughs> Alright, I like that we have some good low drops. I feel like we shouldn't struggle to find big creatures since, you know, green does that. But maybe seeing those pride malkins get passed early. Green got green dried up a little quicker than you'd want to see. Ranger's Guile is pretty good, though. That's a nice trick for us. <laughs> Secure the scene's only a splash option. And that's if we can get cards that make the splashing less intimidating. Bone Pit Brute. Like, this is not a fantastic card. Hopefully we can find something better to play than this just weird, angry... What is that facial expression? All right, uh, sure, we'll take a Titanic Growth. We That helps us splash when Windscarred Crag, sure. Who knows? Maybe it works out, maybe it makes sense, maybe not. Life goes on, eh. All right, seeing the mountain at the end, that always makes you feel like you're doing something right. Man, two rare lands? Come on. Our rare openings have been rather garbage so far. In our two drafts, we have not had any impressive amounts of rares or any impressive pulls. This pack, Canopy Stalker, is not good. A second Watcher of the Spheres, Chandra's Magma. I mean, this is a horrible pack for us as well. There's really nothing too exciting here. I mean... Maybe we just take Canopy Stalker and then protect it with tricks. Try and make a card that's not so bad to... Oh my goodness. That makes me feel better about being in red. Having Chandra get passed to us. That is helpful. Talk about getting bailed out. And Warden of the Woods. I love this card. Even if we need a lower costed card. I don't. I just. I love Warden of the Woods too much. I'm not as worried about splashing white right now because we're playing some big double-costed stuff. Oh my gosh, we just got a Chandra past us. It makes me so happy. We get the Planeswalker today. All right, how's our curve looking? All right, we don't want to get too crazy. Let's find something smaller. Uh, that something smaller will not really be in this pack. Instead, we'll take Pitchburn Devils. Actually, sorry, let me just, let's just check. Uh, we could use another four drop. So I guess we'll take the Goblin Wizardry. Okay, we have a red green land, but I actually just really like Volcanic Geyser. Helps us close out a close game, helps us be instant speed removal. It'll help us do what we need to do. Life gain, land, this doesn't do anything for us. Crash through could be a fine playable though. All right, now we can take another low-costed card, Igneous Cur. Goblin Arsonist has been surprisingly annoying in this set. I don't know, it's just the fact that there's so much low two toughness type stuff that it it blocks way better than you think a one drop ever should or would. Hunter's Edge, sure, we'll take some removal. Chandra, oh my goodness. I'm just happy to see you. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're doing well. We should be friends this draft and just play you on curve every game and then play warden of the woods the next turn and just watch our opponent rage scoop every time what more do you need all right but if i'm checking out my draft we could use we need at least two more two drops if not three and then hopefully a couple more interactive removal spells we just we yeah we're struggling for removal where's that famous cheap red removal all right, we're not playing any of this, so I'm just going to take the Uncommon to help with our 859.5% Vault progress. Canopy Stalker. I want to try and not make this card good, but just not lose it to a 2-drop. If we can make it so it at least eats a creature or two, that would make me pretty happy. Because the 4-2, it having to be blocked could benefit us if we're up against a slower deck and they're trying to keep something on the board all right we're in the four plus power matters deck we don't have many four plus power payoffs but that could change there's another two drop we have three igneous curves 
we could get better options, but it's there. Now we just wait and we hope our, let's just open Ugin and all we're going to do is then jam as many cheap creatures as we can until we let our planeswalker just win the game for us. So Chandra, not quite as good as Ugin. The only plus one are to shock something while Ugin plus one's to bolt something. I mean, yeah, Ugin also wipes the board, but Chandra here, what's your ultimate? Search your graveyard and library for any number of red instants or sorceries, exile them. You can cast them and you get six mana to help you cast them that turn. We need more removal. We just don't, like, we couldn't even really use her ability right now. That's kind of a bummer. Take Frost Breath. Ooh, don't mind if we do. Do we take the land or do we take Thrill of Possibility? Let's take the land. That was not the worst thing to just, you know, junk pick and it ends up being a land that helps your deck when you got a lot of dual cost cards. Yeah, we'll take it. All right, what are we hoping for? We're hoping for some red removal and a couple better low drops. That's what we need. And I will be feeling much happier about what's going on. I'd love to get the, the two drop that you can sack something and then the uncommon where we can steal something. Because the fact that when you steal something, it gives you some mana back to make that sacrificing a lot easier. That's just always nice. All right. We didn't get a playable rare again. Ghostly Pilfers impressed me quite a bit. Wild War, Wildwood Scourge, though, I've liked a lot. Dire Fleet Warmonger is not bad, but doesn't help us. Meteorite, whatever. And we'd get some removal with Turn to Slag. Mm, how many creatures do we have? We're at 13 creatures. Wildwood Scourge goes well with Spellgorger Weird. Goes well with Pride Malkin. Goes well with Hunter's Edge. But I think, I feel like we just have to, we don't have enough removal right now. We have to take the removal. Ooh, and then we get Garrick's Uprising. Oh my goodness, there's so many good cards in this pack for us. We could use the Dreadmaw. We could use Heroic Intervention. But Garrick's Uprising just works, even though we don't have a ton of four-costed cards. I think we have enough to make Garrick's Uprising our borderline one condition and hope that we can get some other stuff to wield to us. Ooh, Drowsing Trandon. Yes, you are a card I'm happy. Ooh, Palladium Mar would be really good for us too, though. Oh, nope, not that one. Helps us get to our earlier plays, but I'm, I think I'm happier with the two drop, especially since we do have a couple ways to get this up to four power. All right, let's take that. If this is our deck... What can we improve? We could probably cut one cur and find something a little better. We've seen like four. If we were in the blue-white flyers deck, we'd have 16 Watcher of the Spheres. <laughs> All right, we have one, two. No, we only have two targets for our Fierce Empath. I don't think we need a second one of those right now. I think we need something a bit, I don't know, just track down help us make sure we hit what we need or sure strike as that combat trick i've really liked track down and we don't have a track down quite yet so let's take that maybe we end up bringing it back in <laughs> all right there's almost nothing fear of the bitten could work for us though it helps make that earlier play that much harder but again that 2-1 that lets us sack something also having trample is really nice I'm hesitant on, on slamming that into the deck quite yet. All right, what can we improve on still? Oh, Bone Pit Brute is not great. I really wish we had a Colossal Dreadmaw. That would kind of make me a happy camper. Because if we don't, yeah, if we don't get anything else, I don't know how likely we are to play Fierce Empath. Another Watcher of the Spheres. What is happening? What is happening? All right, I am pretty happy to see Hobble Fiend here, though. <laughs> I don't understand. I guess I'm happy to see Hobble Fiend, but why? What am I talking about? I'm envisioning I already have the Steal Your Creature card, but I don't have that, so I don't actually need that. Turret Ogre, four power, deals two damage to each target. That could do something. I guess I like the Trample. Maybe that's what I'm getting at. I want the trample in there because when we have a combat trick or something, that makes that could potentially be helpful for us. Mm, Pitchburn Devils, yeah, we'll take you. 
And I think we just end up cutting the Fierce Empath because we only have one thing it can grab. And knowing my luck, I'm going to have Watch Warden of the Woods in every starting hand. So we don't really want that there. What else we got? Just nothing exciting coming around. There's that. And now we just wait. Do we have to splash the white card to help us just have a bit more removal? Because we got no shocks, none of our instant, no instant speed red removal, except for the one uncommon volcanic geyser. Oh, we got a colossal dread maw. That helps. Now that makes me a bit more excited about Fierce Empath. A second pitch burn devils makes its way to us. I don't know if we need return to nature. I don't think, not a best of one. All right, so we're at 24 right now. We need to cut one spell. What What is that one spell? This thing, no one was in the blue white deck? That's crazy to me. Well, that's why there was six Watcher of the Spheres, because no one wanted to jump into that deck. That's incredible. Ooh, do we just cut the vine though? What are we doing with this card? This card's really just here to help stall in the early game or be a really slow cycler in the late game that Havoc Jester pings something for. But I don't think we need that. Let's just cut that. All right. And game one. Well, that's a lot of green. We're on the draw. Not the ideal start. Oh, and of course we're up against the aggro red deck. There we go. There's our red land. Hobble Fiend. It's like our mirror matchup, but they're looking far more aggressive than we are. This could be an unfortunate quick game. If we can just stabilize, we will be a happy camper. Actually, do we want to play Fierce Empath? It's a good blocker. If it draws removal, I'll be happier about this drawing the removal from them than whatever else they, or I guess them, than them hitting Pride Malkin. It gets our Colossal Dreadmar into our hand, which helps us hopefully draw more land. Okay, there we go. That's not the worst thing in the world. Good usage of the Hobble Fiend though. Battle Rattle Shaman. All right, we are just really needing to stabilize. We don't have a great four drop though. All right, it's not the worst four drop in the world. Unfortunately, it dies to shock, but it will at least be able to block whatever. And then we're of course going to draw a land next turn, play Pitch Burn Devils, and then we will have stabilized. At least that's the theory. Oh my God. Gosh, Rada. Rada, how could you... Just unbelievable. When you run into the ideal draw. Mm. So sad. Okay. Well, that was absolutely depressing. Yeah, we're fine. All right, let's try this again. We ran into a mirror matchup, but it was not in our favor. But I love a hand like this. Again, no two drop. I don't know why we're having such a hard time hitting two drops, but at least we're on the play. So hopefully we don't get immediately ran over. And if we can just hit a land. Fettered Imp, not ideal, but at least we can play Onake Ogre. Then even if we don't hit a land, Garrick's Uprising will still draw us a card. Of course we're playing someone with playing three colors and not missing a beat on their land drops. Yo, what is going on? We're playing 17 lands. Arena, you're supposed to be kind to us, and this is how, this is how you repay us? I don't know how what you're repaying us with, but there we go. Okay, got rid of that card. I feel like trading cards right now is great for us, though, because we do have Garrick's Uprising, and once we hit a land, thank you, Lord. We will be drawing plenty of cards. That makes Canopy Stalker a bit less bad. I don't understand how that's possible. All right, just kidding. 
No, we can't blow that up quite yet, though, because we don't have the mana untapped. That is unfortunate. Okay. End the turn. We can play Goblin Wizardry, then we can turn to Slag. This stupid thing. But Demonic Embrace, what? I mean, we are just having horrendous luck here, people. Resolve. Pass to blockers. Take eight. Down to three. What else you got? All right, Goblin Wizardry it is. All right. Although, like, destroying that doesn't help us. So it's like we almost, we have to save this for the end step, or, f like, for when they go to combat. I don't like that. Hit him for six. End the turn. Sure. So now we're just dead no matter what. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, uh, well that was the absolute worst start for a draft that we could ever hope for. And uh, time to bring it back. This is an awful hand. But we're going to keep it. Because it's got two two drops. And we're playing 17 lands, so we should not have trouble hitting our land drops. This is not at all how I envisioned how this draft would go. All right, they had to mulligan. Get a mercy win? Could happen. Our plan is if we just draw land, we're happy. If we don't draw land, just please don't draw the top end of our deck. All right. Igneous Kerr, please a land next turn. We cannot not draw land. We must draw land. Tavern Swindler, you swindling... How is this possible? How is it possible that we either have a hand with land and we don't have any two drops, or we have two drops and we don't get land? That's just... It just makes me so sad. Hmm. <laughs> Arena, what have I done to upset you? All right, next up, we're going to draw land, which doesn't do anything super exciting for us, but it does help us get closer to playing something like Canopy Stalker. Doesn't look like our opponent has anything too crazy going on. Yeah, tap that. Let's gain some life. There we go. There's one land. And now we attack. And if they want to trade with anything, that's fine. We're, we're fine trading whatever they want to trade right now. I just wish they would play a little faster. This is why we need to rank up, if for no other reason than to play faster. Hopefully. Okay, or just don't block at all. yippee ki -yay. There's our Hobble Fiend, having a good time. Pass. They didn't use their Tavern Swindler. What? You don't play Tavern Swindler to not swindle. That's why it's in there. All right, that's all right. Next time. You you were just you were too busy reading Hobble Fiend. You've never seen this card before. You don't know what's going on. Liliana Steward is a card. It's nice. You know, you sack it. You make us lose some life. Sure. If we can keep hitting land, though, I'm still happy with our situation. What's nice is I can sacrifice both of these creatures to Hobble Fiend, and then that lets Tyranid on attack, except I just sacrificed it to Hobble Fiend, so it can't attack. That's a terrible idea. Okay, here we go. Play Canopy Stalker. Tyranidon can attack. Do we want it to attack? Yeah, why not? If you want to trade it for something, Godspeed. If you have a combat trick, more power to you. But next turn, we're going to hit a land again. Play Pitch Burn Devils. And then we'll be, we'll be feeling good, because that's just going to combo well against whatever they're doing in their deck. Steward and anything? Okie dokie. Nice. Sure. Go nuts. Use your tavern swim. You done. 
you get us all excited about the tavern swindling, and then you don't, you're just sitting there like sipping on your drink. You're not even trying to swindle anyone. She didn't bring these cards to not swindle. All right, 4 3 Blood Glutton. We don't care. That means nothing to us. We're just waiting for you to play your Bane Slayer Angel or Ugin. But if we, maybe if we don't say his name, he won't show up. Isn't that how it works? Okay, we are going to combat. And we are looking for a fight. I don't want to attack with Hobble Fiend, though. All right, we did draw land, but at least we got Titanic Growth. We can also pump the Kerr up once. I feel like now is the time to just apply plenty of pressure and make them have to make, hopefully, some not-so-easy decisions. There you go. Do we want to keep... Keeping this alive keeps our Drowsing Pteranodon alive as well. So we're going to do that. I'm just going to eat your big dumb cage zombie. Go away. And we're going to end the turn. And then once we hit our next land, there you go. You're hovering it. Do it. Oh, they did it. All right. And no dice. We did an extra three damage that turn. You know why you lost that? Because you made her sit there and wait for three turns to do it. All right, there's two life to gain. At this point, we're not too worried about it. We're just waiting to see what they are. Right, another Liliana Stewart. Okay, well, maybe they're just missing their big combo pieces. I'm not too upset about it. Oh, dub. That is a problem. Except for the fact that we have turned to slag. If we could just find our second red, we would be so golden. Are you going to attack? Yes. Okay. Well, we're taking six. Wasn't That wasn't the ideal situation. We have the ideal card to fight whatever's going on here. We just need our deck to cooperate. Please. 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 Do it. Hit it. Hit that Tavern Swindler. Yeah, let's not waste time. Just go for it. Oh my god. <sighs> Okie dokie. Well, we've got Pitchburn Devils. That's a thing. All right, they can hit us for six. We still got to make sure we can take care of this anointed choicener. Or, co oh, coerster, not choicener. All right. Why is our deck being so uncooperative with us right now? You know, I mean, I kept a two lander, so. But now we just need that second red. Just. I guess we don't even need the second red. If we get Warden of the Woods down, we're still feeling pretty okay. I love the pump pre-combat. Go for it. Make us discard a card. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I'm going to discard. If we hit a land, I'm happy. But I think we need to keep the removal because that's that's what this is a problem. Alright. I'm surprised they've pump this thing pre-combat and are just full sending. Or do we just triple block here and take care of this thing? Here, actually, we'll do this and this. So these are both going to die. And as long as I get in for two damage. Oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. Because if they don't kill this, then we're, we're just ruined. This is just all bad for us. Just block here. Call it a day, take six, and just wait for our removal, wait for our red land. It's gotta be there. There's no other option. Okay, gain a life. We can do damage to him so quickly. I'm not at all worried about any of that. We just need to get this thing off the board. That ain't gonna do it. That is not gonna do it. So there's that. I guess one thing we can look to potentially do is just throw a chump blocker in front of this and then use it to make Hobble Fiend bigger. Let's attack. Attack for four. Throw the Kerr in front of it. Sack it to Hobble Fiend. 
and just keep biding our time until we find our second red source. Oh my goodness, that's a good draw. Our clock has been a little bit shortened. Block. Dun 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 dun. All right, one chump blocker down. We can throw Pride Malkin in front of it. Next turn, here we go, red land. Please, please, fantastic. Well, it gives us two more chump blockers, so that's a thing. We'll do that and that. All right, start hitting for land, hitting for land, hitting for damage. Trying to slow him down a bit. Hit him with the resolve. Alright. Pass to attackers. There you go. You did it. Play Goblin Wizardry. Go to blockers at some point. And make our Hobble Fiend bigger. Now Hobblefink can attack too because it's bigger than Tavern Swindler's defense. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. This is good. This will just thin our deck a little bit, which is absolutely the point you want Fierce Empath to be is just a, a deck thinning card. And at least our opponent is running short on cards themselves. There you go. Don't even let us think you're going to block anything. Sure. All right. Got him down to nine. Should be ten. We might even be able to kill him next turn, depending on what they draw, because we've still got the ability to chump block this unless they kill this, which if they do, we'll be very sad. Infernal Scarring. Plus two, plus zero, and when it dies, draw a card. It's interesting to me. Why are you doing that? We can still chump block each. Are they going to sacrifice it to something? I don't know, let's find out. Because we can sacrifice Pitchburn Devils too and get another three damage on them. So we may be able to scrape this one out even with our deck not cooperating. I mean, I yeah, unless they got something special here. I think we just got them. Oh, they're not attacking. Also an option. Here we go. Redland. <laughs> You're going to make us wait a turn. Got it. This is when they draw a bad deal and ruin our entire lives. Yep. Well, you're not going to attack. We're not going to attack either. It's the cool thing to do. Or they have the comp, or they just do the combat trick that gives their creature pro whatever. Just play a land. Make me think you have two land and I'll be happy. That's fine. That's all good. That is all good. As long as it doesn't draw you the combat trick. Nice. We like that. We are so close. Please, pretty please. Yeah, do it. Use Tavern Swindler. All right, here we go. Here's everything. This is our card. Literally, our cards are on the table. 24, tw this is like our only chance to win. Oh my gosh, we got him. Okay, that feels great. And actually, if we attack with everything here, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. Use this. Sacrifice this. Hit that. There we go. I love it. And then they don't have a tap. The struggle is real. All right, here we go. Here we go. Time for win number two. We'll lose two in a row and then like win seven in a row. I don't, I don't see a problem with that. 
Ooh, I'd love to be on the play. But hey, two drop into three drop with the land. Happy to see that. We haven't seen Chandra yet. Come on, deck. Help us out. Frey Ace. I don't know. I don't know how to. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Ooh, our opponent took a mulligan as well. I don't mind that. What is this sleeve? Oh, that's a cool looking sleeve. Who is that? Tybalt? Just hanging out. Wait, I don't want to, I don't want to, I do that sometimes, right? You like hover this out there and then you draw the tap land and then you feel like a big dum-dum. But not today. The old 3-1, give your creature indestructible, huh? All right. This card can be quite good and pretty difficult to deal with. So let's see how able we are to deal with it. Sure. All right. We can. I'm fine trading cards here because they they had to mulligan. They're down to three. Ooh, that's a actually a really good draw for us. Because in response to them making it indestructible, we can hit it again, and they have to give it indestructible again. So that might be a bridge too far for them. You want to do it again? All right, past blockers. Let's go. Discard that card. Maybe they don't know that I can sack this in response before it actually has indestructible. I don't know. Yeah, let's do it. So now you're going to hit for two. This card will die. <laughs> Mark my words. You're going down. Depending on what we draw, hopefully it's a land, but if it's not, we're still keeping up mana just to play Goblin Wizardry. Oh, but they could counter it. That would be that would make me sad. Alright, wait, they discarded Bossry's Acolyte and read the tides. That is fine. Okay, I'm half tempted to think they have to have a counter spell. So this is not a great usage of Pride Malkin. But we will throw it down here and... Okay, nope. So they just can't even use their mana. Sure. Yeah, let's go. That's fine. Dude, I will trade cards with you all day if that's what it takes. But this thing's going down. Got rid of removal. This thing this is going great. And then... Ooh, do we go for the bigger spell? Four, two, three, three. Let's just keep up Goblin Wizardry. Let's keep it up. No land. All right, there's some. Ooh, not ideal, because now it's got two toughness. Did not see that coming. And there's no way they're playing miscast, right? That's the only card that ruins everything we're trying to do here. Equip it. Do it. Oh, okay. They could still have a counter spell. Although Lofty, De Lofty Denial doesn't ruin it. It's really only their big, dumb... Nope, okay, they don't have it. Yeah, we'll make you give it indestructible for the hundredth time. Hey, Lofty Denial. They had it. They couldn't use it because we still had one extra land. Makes me feel good. All right, now we'll throw you down. So there you go. 5-7 Vigilance. Seasoned Hollow Blade. It's a decent card, but it's not the end-all be-all. And we just gave, I believe, our thing Hexproof. Oh my goodness. We like what's happening here. We might actually get to go on a winning streak. Next to all the damages. And we'll use more mana. Who knows what they drew. And the turn. I think Ranger's Gow just ensures that we're going to be really tough to beat now. I would love for them to target this with removal too. And then let's give it Hexproof and get to draw some cards. 
Feels good. My turn. We're just going to keep hitting them for five. This is a really good blocker for them right now, though, because we can throw anything into it and they're basically trading whatever card they don't care about so much in their hand for it. So don't really want that. Actually, I should have played this land because unless... Nah, it probably doesn't matter. See, oh my gosh, they went for it. And we got it. That's got to be the scoop. There's no way they don't scoop here. Yep. Yep. There we go. Find our groove. Keep it going. But our pack one, pick one, Heartfire Emulator, I really feel was our, like, MVP. The fact that it got two cards out of them for it, that was a big help. All right, Saz. Look, we're playing Garrick. We've got Garrick's Uprising. Let us uprise with Garrick. There's Chandra. Oh my goodness. Opponent goes first. His hand is not great, but it's three land, four spells, and we are just can't. All right, we need green. Green. Nothing? Just say go? I would not mind it. Hey, we found a green land. All right, now we've got five, so we can play turn to slag and Chandra's Heartfire. Life is good. We just need to find a couple spells to help us get there without taking too much damage. But as soon as Chandra comes down, she's shocking something. Okay, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Now we're not going to block that one because we're going to draw a three drop. No, we'll draw another two drop. That's not all bad. All we need to do is bide our time. As long as they don't play something stupid like Baneslayer Angel or the last red or geez white black deck that we played having Ugin. As long as that's not the case, we should be okay. Sure. This also destroys all equipment attached to it, so that's not too bad. All right. Um, I don't exactly want to take five. But if we don't draw anything, we're still just going to trade this away for that because we can pump it up. And yeah, they get to draw a card, but that's not a big deal. Heartfire's Emulator. Do we just kill this now? Nah, we'll wait. Because this can get up to three toughness too. Sure, gain your life. They're still one away from getting that thing back. Which I do not mind. Okay. Because even if they pump theirs up, we still take this out. Trade I will make all the time with the hand I have. What do you have, though, is the question. Because if you have Bane Slayer Angel, it'll be the bane of my existence. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. Nice. So we can do this. Chandra, don't mind if we do. We are not going to discard our hand, but we will you ping you for two. Fancy little graphic there. Hit for three. Okay. So then next turn, what's really, really nice is we get to shock a creature they play. We also get to turn to slag something and get rid of this short sword, because short sword's pretty decent in this set. With how aggro it is and just maybe giving your creature that one power and or toughness can really make a difference in a game. Well, yep, there you go. Are you going to equip there? Oh, okay. Sure. So I could turn to slag it, but I just don't, like, I don't need to. And I'm happy to see them just keep using their mana on it. Awesome. So there's that too. Maybe now we just hit it though, because... Does this get our card back? Yeah, library and graveyard. So now we can just get rid of it and the equipment it has. Bye-bye. Hit him. End the turn. 
Okay. I mean, really, our our issue is running into another mythic rare bomb. I'm not super worried about much else in this set. And the, of course, the removal, you know, the exile target permanent leave us with a token. Losing us Chandra would not be the most exciting thing in the world. But here we go, ping him for two. Sure. There it is. Let you and say go. And of course, if we can hit our second green, Warren of the Woods coming down is pretty much a home run. Grand slammy. No idea what I'm talking about. Anointed choice in her. They have four, eight, so they're at least two land away from doing anything with that. Oh my god. Alright, maybe, just maybe, discard your hand and exile the top three cards of your library. Until in a turn, you may play cards exiled this way. So if we ping this, they just pump it up, of course. But then we could also kill it. We don't really want... Yeah, that's it's kind of annoying that both their cards right now are pumpable. Let's just do this. We just ping them out. And if they want to get aggressive with this, then we can kill it before it actually does any damage. That's fine. That's fine. They're on the clock, not us. We just need our second green land. We've drawn six of our eight mountains. All right, short sword is kind of annoying. Yep, resolve. But if they attack with it, we just throw hobble fiend in front of it. Oh, you're just full sending. Okie dokie. Um, actually, don't need to worry about that. Yeah, we just pump there. Because then if they go to pump, we just kill it in response and we're good. Yeah, that's fine. See? You're dead. Bye-bye. And now this is dead next turn too, so we're fine. Everything's fine. Nice. Don't love that it used the only green land we have for some reason, but sure. Bye. I guess that was the best play on their part, like, that they could make. Sometimes you just gotta let your opponent make a mistake. But we're not interested in making mistakes right now. Sure. Swift response, Bye bye Can't draw a second green land to save our life, but that's fine. Chandra's here to save the day, and thankfully we're just able to find our early drops to buy us enough time. Okay. Oh my goodness. We don't have to worry about which two color lands we're gonna have. We have a two drop into a three drop into removal. Warden of the Woods, like I said, is going to be in every starting hand. Silent dart. What? Okay. This three damage to any creature. That's fine. Ooh, blue green. All right, let's go. They're going to be drawing a ton of cards. Thankfully, we're we're hitting land. We can use one more deck, and then from there on out, we're just spell focused. But let's just. Even still, let's just maybe get a couple spells here. Alrighty, that's a thing. Play you. Take the damage. Play the 4-2. What I really like about this 4-2 here is that if they play something that we can then blow up with Hunter's Edge, well, then we're hitting them for a lot. Although this doing 3 damage at instant speed could just kill this and that's their turn. Not the... Not like the worst thing that could happen to us though. All right, there's our sixth land. Uh, we'll attack and just pump, pump, pump it up. Take five. Not the worst use of our turn. Now it's buying each of us time. Things are happening. They're capture sphering our two drop. Who's upset about that? Not me. Five. Canopy Stalker. Again, not a great card, but here, 
might not be too bad depending on what they play. Them hunters edging our canopy stalker is in a way hilarious, but also kind of nice because we're playing Warden of the Woods next turn. And oh my goodness, never mind, we're playing Chandra. And goodbye. Now we're gonna have two monster threats that they have to deal with. And once we play Warden of the Woods, well, that is gonna feel all kinds of better. And actually, well, we don't have to worry about them taking care of it right now. So we'll just keep shocking them to death, make them really have to worry about this. I don't think they're gonna do seven damage to it, although they could play their draw card and then pump it up was a test in training. That's an option. Draws the card. Can't block it anymore. What else you got? That's one option. If we draw a land, we can play Colossal Dreadmaw. Hope they use their counter on that. If they don't, well, we're still going to try and Hunter's Edge that thing. Two damage. Any target. Next. Wait, I said we could... Oh, that was so silly of me. But I guess they're at five. And if they want to take out Chandra... Godspeed. Because right now we've got a 6-6 six, six trample. This shocks them for two. So right now that's kind of lethal. That's, that's kind of lethal. If they have another capture sphere... All right, they're taking out Chandra. Very sad. That's big sad. But we still got them. Just big. That's the best thing about green. Is once you just get to your big bodies. And us having both of ours there. That was a fine game for us. And that's where you're frustrated as the blue green, green player. Because you're probably looking at your hand thinking. I will smash anyone. If I can just have a turn to breathe. Oh we go first. This is. The Warden of the Woods. How many hands have we had Warden of the Woods in our starting hand? I don't know how that's possible. I don't know how this is in every single starting hand. And there's no way we can keep this because three cards are unplayable and we have nothing till turn four. Oh my God. This is just, what? what is happening? All right. Well, thank you, Variants, for not kicking us in the teeth immediately. Actually, let's keep... Uh, we're going to get rid of you. Keep you, get rid of you. Yeah, at least you let us get to four wins and at least earn most of our gems back before you just completely ruined everything. But boy, oh boy. I will say, I've won a couple games with this mulligan into five. You just get a couple ideal draws and you're good. That is not exactly what we're hoping for. Okay. <laughs> Especially against blue white, this could be rough. If they get some evasion going, like a 2 2 flyer. Oh, they didn't attack though. Because they're like, hey, we can just poke them to death. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. What do we put on the bottom? Do we put two spells? Yeah. And ha Ooh, Havoc Jester would have been pretty decent if we had actual ways to sacrifice stuff consistently. Just pinging this thing down. Hey, I, I respect that little value right there with your flyer. Hit for four in the air. Yup. And when you're in their seat and you see your opponent mulligan two, one, two times, you just have to, well, maybe they're like, oops, could have played that earlier. That's okay. Hey, we found another kind of pointless to drop oh no yeah let's start hey we can get we can get aggressive too i just kept assuming they were going to attack and then make us do stuff but or by make us do stuff i mean want to just discard and make this thing indestructible there you go end the turn We don't have really anything that can deal with this. As a blocker, we can just straight up remove it with turn to slag, which thankfully 
we have in our hand. We just need to draw another card. Riddle form. You know, it happens. It's a thing. My turn. That's not what we want to see. And if I could, I would love to be able to just get Spell Gorger Weird big enough to block this thing whenever. And maybe just get our opponent to keep discarding cards to save their Seasoned Hollow Blade. Sure. Okay. Oh. They got some life gain in their deck, too. We're not seeing it, but they apparently have it. Okay. Now, our opponent's going to keep digging for those spell cards and be able to pitch extra land. That's really good for them. Ooh, Ghost Light is just a problem because it's another flyer that we have to deal with. That's our downfall. If we can just get rid of their one flyer and then not have to worry about anything, we'd be fine. See, they should be getting way more aggressive, I would think. Maybe not, though. Chandra? Nope. Although you do help us do that. So let's, yeah. Let's just get rid of you right now. Make you bigger. And then one more, and we have a permanent blocker for Seasoned Hollow Blade, which would be great. Once we just hit that fifth land, we're there. And we will have the skies all but clear except for Riddle Form, which we don't have any ways to really deal with it. I'm assuming they're playing this just to get us within one turn of death. Ooh, and Revital. Okay, so that all but ruins us. We were trying. We were, we were really fighting to hang on there for a minute. I wonder if that's like their... Oh, they have two Gryphonaries. Okay. When you got two Gryphonaries, I don't I don't fault you for playing Revitalize quite as much. Although, I, I really don't think it's that bad of a card. But again, we... Us finding our land is not going to happen this game. All right. Good game. Well played. We'll let him... We'll let him hit us. Maybe. Oh, okay. Show. I get it. Show off. Flex a little bit. That's fine. So this was, again, just a... Brutal. I'm killing this stupid thing. <laughs> Those first two games. Brutal beatdowns. And then we lose the third one to a mold of five on the play. I've definitely felt worse about drafts. This M21 season, not off to the best start. But again, that could have ended way worse. Happy to get most of the gems back. Whew. All right, folks. Well, we will see you in the next one. At least it was a quick video, got some quick wins and some quick losses, but we're going to keep moving forward. We still progressed up the ladder a bit. We're going to get into gold here soon. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Peace.